This is a video in clinical medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. This video will demonstrate the placement of the laryngeal mask airway, or LMA, as an emergency airway device in patients experiencing a cardiopulmonary arrest. The goal is to provide familiarity with and instruction in its use so that a clinician will be comfortable using this device to provide effective ventilation for patients in cardiopulmonary arrest. Instruction beyond this video is necessary for safe and effective placement of a laryngeal mask airway, and the clinician should seek further training from anesthesiologists or others who have expertise in its use. The laryngeal mask airway is a device used routinely by anesthesiologists for surgical operations. Its use should also be strongly considered for ventilation in pre-hospital and in-hospital cardiac arrests. Both the American Heart Association and the European Resuscitation Council consider the laryngeal mask airway an acceptable device for use by non-experts in tracheal intubation when performing emergency airway management. The laryngeal mask airway is also an important rescue device in situations where tracheal intubation is impossible or has failed, and in situations where access to the head or positioning for intubation is not possible. Use of laryngeal mask airway instead of bag and mask ventilation during CPR has also led to fewer events of pulmonary aspiration during resuscitation. The reasons for laryngeal mask airway placement during CPR are many and include high first time success rates, rapid placement by both novices and experts, necessitating minimal disruption, if any, of chest compressions, ease of ventilation during prolonged resuscitations as compared with bag and mask ventilation. It is a good option over placing an endotracheal tube when tracheal intubation is difficult or has failed and placement can be achieved without head movement in patients with potential instability of the cervical spine, for example in patients with traumatic injuries or rheumatoid arthritis. An adult-sized laryngeal mask airway is a flexible breathing tube of approximately 25 centimeters in length with an inflatable bladder or cuff on its distal end. The proximal end has a standard 15 millimeter connector that allows attachment to any ventilation system. Air exchange occurs through the aperture on the distal end of the tube. This illustration shows the identity and location of the tongue, hard palate, epiglottis, esophagus, and laryngeal inlet. Review of these structures is helpful for understanding proper placement and potential difficulties. Unlike oral airways, and nasal airways, the laryngeal mask airway bypasses all pharyngeal structures to provide a more direct conduit to the laryngeal inlet. When properly placed, the laryngeal mask airway requires less pressure than bag and mask ventilation to achieve effective ventilation, thus minimizing the risk of gastric insufflation and subsequent pulmonary aspiration. Current laryngeal mask airway models include both straight and pre-curved tube designs and models intended for either single or multiple uses. Some devices include a separate channel for suctioning the stomach, while others are specifically designed to facilitate oral tracheal intubation through the device. Laryngeal mask airways are available in up to five pediatric sizes and three adult sizes. Typically, your resuscitation committee will decide upon a model and sizes suitable to your patient population. As a general rule, a number four laryngeal mask airway is adequate for the average adult female patient and a five for the average adult male patient. You'll need to consult the sizing chart provided by the manufacturer of the device to select the correct size. To prepare for laryngeal mask airway insertion, you'll need an appropriate size device, a 20 to 40 milliliter syringe, lubricating jelly, and tape. Often, laryngeal mask airways come prepackaged with an inflation syringe and a small package of lubricant. Prepare the device by first removing all excess air from the bladder. Then lubricate the posterior surface of the cuff to facilitate easy and smooth passage into the mouth. The posterior surface is the side opposite where air exchange occurs. The following sequences will demonstrate the placement of laryngeal mask airway in consenting adults undergoing elective surgical operations. With the patient in the supine position, gently tilt the head backwards to facilitate placement. Do not perform this backwards tilt 
in an unconscious patient in whom a neck injury is suspected. Place a straight laryngeal mask airway, open the mouth as fully as possible, and insert the device into the mouth, directing the posterior cuff against the hard palate. Continue with this motion until you feel the tube's cuff pass behind the tongue completely, and then until you meet resistance. Successful insertion depends on keeping the leading edge flat to prevent the cuff from folding on itself and exerting firm pressure against the hard palate during passage. Inflate the cuff with approximately 30 milliliters of air. During inflation, the shaft of the airway often moves out of the mouth 1 to 2 centimeters as it finds its proper location. The cuff should not be visible when the tube is in the proper position. The final resting position is posterior to the tongue at the laryngeal inlet, as shown in this illustration and in this fiber optic view through the distal end of the device. This cutaway view of the head and neck illustrates the path taken by the laryngeal mask airway during insertion and where it rests following insertion. Key structures are labeled to illustrate the relevant anatomy. Use of a pre-curved laryngeal mask airway sometimes allows placement without the need to insert hands inside a patient's mouth. To place a pre-curved laryngeal mask airway, grab the connecting tube with your dominant hand so the cuff points to the patient's head. Your hand should be in a neutral position with the thumb on the upward surface of the tube. As with the straight tube, guide the laryngeal mask airway above and behind the tongue by applying firm pressure along the patient's hard palate. Guide the tube behind the tongue and toward the larynx with a circular motion of the hand. After placement, inflate the cuff and then connect the device to a positive pressure ventilation system. Confirm proper placement by auscultation of breath sounds. Auscultation of breath sounds should take less than five seconds and placement of the laryngeal mask airway during resuscitation should not require interruption of CPR. Improper placement of laryngeal mask airway can result in a poor seal or an obstruction of airflow. If air leaks from the mouth or you do not achieve adequate ventilation, add an additional 5 to 10 milliliters of air to the cuff. If additional air in the cuff fails to improve ventilation or decrease the air leak, then gently remove and reinsert the laryngeal mask airway. If ventilation is still not achieved or there is still a large leak of air from the mouth, attempt placement of a larger laryngeal mask airway. The most common location of obstruction is at the level of the oropharynx, either because the epiglottis has folded down or because the tongue or redundant oropharyngeal tissue is pushed into the airway. Selection of the proper size laryngeal mask airway, as well as use of proper insertion technique, will reduce the frequency of these problems. Use of a tongue blade to partially retract the tongue and to provide counterpressure against the hard palate is one way to improve entry of the laryngeal mask airway into the mouth. Additional lubrication or briefly dipping the cuff in clean water may also help prevent the cuff from sticking to the tongue and oropharynx. In addition, a small mouth opening or large tongue may prevent use of the operator's finger and hand to get the laryngeal mask airway behind the tongue. In such cases, use of the connecting tube shaft to create downward pressure may be necessary. Once adequate ventilation has been established, secure the laryngeal mask airway with tape to prevent movement of the device. Even when secured, the laryngeal mask airway may become dislodged with motions such as twisting or pulling. When moving patients, place one hand at the base of the laryngeal mask airway and disconnect the ventilation system from the device. Once the laryngeal mask airway is placed, the adult patient should receive 8 to 10 breaths per minute during continuous chest compressions. You should deliver quick breaths, ideally less than one second per breath each with a volume of approximately 500 milliliters. If you hear air leakage during ventilation, you'll have to alternate ventilation and chest compressions. In the latter case, give two 500 milliliter breaths following every 30 chest compressions. This ratio of 30 compressions to two breaths should be continued for as long as CPR is being performed. Delivery of drugs through the laryngeal mask airway to the pulmonary epithelium is unreliable and is not recommended. The laryngeal mask airway may be left in place for the duration of the resuscitation. If a definitive airway is still needed, an experienced provider in airway management should replace the laryngeal mask airway with an endotracheal tube. Complications associated with laryngeal mask airway use 
are similar to those with other tools used for airway management. However, there may be fewer complications than with bag and mask ventilation and endotracheal intubation. These complications include the potential for upper airway trauma, tooth dislodgement or damage, and the introduction of a large volume of air into the stomach. Despite its numerous advantages for rescue ventilation, the laryngeal mask airway does not provide a secure airway and will not protect against aspiration when the volume of gastric contents is large. It may also be difficult to ventilate a patient with a laryngeal mask airway when high airway or thoracic pressures are encountered. For example, during vigorous chest compressions or in obese patients or patients with parenchymal lung disease. Additional familiarity with the laryngeal mask airway can be gained with practice on a training head model, on a patient simulator, or on real patients in the operating room under the guidance of an anesthesiologist. The laryngeal mask airway provides a fast and effective alternative to tracheal intubation and is used for an increasing number of clinical indications, including ventilation during cardiopulmonary arrest. Laryngeal mask airway placement is usually successful in the initial attempt. Thus, it is an important procedure to learn and practice.